Hi everybody, Jeff Yastine here. Send me your emails and comments to my address, jeff at yastine.com. And you can of course follow me on Twitter and on Facebook as well. Well, solar stocks are one of the hottest groups in the market of light. You know, there's a lot of momentum, plenty of stocks in that sector are hitting new all-time highs. All that's great. It means that there's lots of money going into these companies. And I think that's likely to continue in the year ahead. But it's not uncommon for hot sectors to sometimes cool down for a while. Sometimes traders decide to uh, make a quick exit because they feel the stocks have been run up as far as they can for now. And they'll shift their attention elsewhere to other sectors and then come back to something like solar later. Sometimes Wall Street analysts downgrade a sector too for similar reasons and the stocks move lower. Now, speaking for myself, uh, faced with the risk of that kind of situation, sometimes I'll start looking for other companies within the sector that have been left behind for one reason or another. The way I think about it, if I make the right choice, the stock I choose will catch a bid and move higher with the rest of the group sooner or later uh, if momentum in that sector continues to be hot. And if the whole sector cools off, well, one of these left behind stocks may not have nearly as much potential downside risk, you know, dropping too much in price. So here's a company that uh, I like that falls into the category, Array Technologies, symbol A-R-R-Y. This company does not make solar panels. Array makes the tracking motors that slowly tilt a bank of solar panels so they always face optimally towards the sun. Uh, the motors increase the power output of a panel by up to 25%. Array is one of the dominant players and it's part of the industry too. One out of every four solar modules in operation in the United States is attached to an Array Technologies tracking motor. Now, Array has three parts to its uh, business model, its growth strategy. One is to continue increasing its share of the U.S. solar power market. And like I said, it already has 25% uh, of that market. The other is to increase its presence in solar uh, power installations on an international scale. And third, Array also generates a lot of profit and a lot of cash flow. So it wants to use some of that cash flow to buy up other companies within the solar industry as well. And I think that's a great strategy as well because this uh, industry, the solar industry, is still rather fragmented. Now the company went public, Array Technologies went public earlier this year, so it's still largely unknown or obscure to the trading and institutional investing community, but I don't think it's gonna last for too much longer. Array Technologies is no startup. It's been a business since the late 1980s when solar power was a tiny industry compared to what it is now. That's a great sign. It shows this firm staying power. It is well run and unlike many companies within the alternative energy sector, it's highly profitable and has been so for a long time. One way to check that out is to look at a company's ROE, its return on equity. It's a measure of how efficiently executives use their shareholders cash to generate profits. Array has an ROE of 14. It means it generates a profit of $14 for every $100 of shareholders capital. That's pretty good. Now, when uh, Array closes the books on 2020, it should report a profit of 86 cents a share, rising to 90 cents a share next year, then $1.06, $1.19, and $1.56 a share through 2024. And if we compare the current share price to Array's 2021 projected profits, we can see that the stock is trading at around 40 times its annual earnings. Uh, it's a PE ratio. That might seem a little on the expensive side, but I actually think that Array Technologies is somewhat undervalued here when you consider the long-term profitability, great cash flow, and growth that's still ahead for this company. And here's something else to remember about companies like Array Technologies. Uh, they make money selling their electrical tracking motors and guidance software, of course. But what happens to all motors over time? They wear down. They need replacement parts. And while I don't have specific data on that from this company, typically replacement parts are a highly profitable business. 
So it's a great sort of razor and razor blades business model. You sell your customer the motor first, uh, and for years into the future, you'll also sell your customer replacement parts that they absolutely have to have in order to get you know, the most generating power from their solar panel arrays. So that's a great way to always have money coming in. Now, from a technical analysis standpoint, there's not much to go on here since it's only been trading since mid-October. You can see the shares got off to a good start, and then around the end of November uh, fell apart. The shares dropped about 30% in price over the course of about five trading sessions. That decline represents a good buy-in point, in my opinion. The decline was caused by the company's announcement that it's going to do a secondary offering of uh, 25 million shares. It turned out to be 30 million shares. They raised it because there's so much demand. Now, if you're new to the stock market, a secondary offering sometimes represents a dilution of stock in your claim to the company's profits. And that's why the share price will often temporarily go down with a company like this when they make an announcement of a secondary offering. Think of it like uh, slices of a pizza. The more slices there are, the less valuable each individual slice becomes at that moment. But you also have to take these kinds of announcements in context. When a company is a growth company reporting larger and larger profits each year, as is expected with the Ray Technologies, well, it's actually increasing the size of the overall pizza. So for growth companies, it's also important that the stock has enough liquidity so that institutions can buy up uh, the size they need, you know, tens of thousands of shares at a clip without moving the price too much. And when a company has a strong following among institutional traders, uh, that can actually be very beneficial since uh, that sort of institutional buying can push the stock up uh, really far, really, really fast. So that's just a long way of saying that secondary offerings are sometimes good things to see in a well-run company. And I think it bodes well for Array Technology stock, which I expect could rise 50% or more over the coming year. Now, while that may not seem like much when these days, you know, people seem to be daily bragging about huge profits that they make in a stock that doubles in a, a few days or a month. Uh, in my opinion, it's a good idea to have an assortment of growth companies in your trading or investing portfolio. You know, some of these companies run like rabbits. You know, they sprint ahead, but they also need to rest basically for substantial periods of time as traders move elsewhere. Other kinds of companies like Array Technologies may be more like turtles, but they just keep plowing ahead. And we know from the old childhood nursery tale, which one, the rabbit or the turtle, ultimately wins the race. I'm Jeff Yastine. I'll be back again soon with another video. Uh, and in the meantime, make sure to keep following me on Facebook and on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel.